In section two, we take that exponential function and we take it further. So we already know that exponential functions have set proportions, but it's only going to be between the y values. What this means is that each of those y values have to be multiplied by the same value for each increasing or decreasing x value. So saying as our x's increase by one, each and every single one of our y values, because f of x is y, they need to be multiplied by the same value. Sorry, I'll just move that down a little bit. There we go. So 1 to get to 4 is multiplying by 4. 4 to get to 9 is multiplying by 2.25. Nine multiplied by one point seven repeated gives us sixteen, and sixteen multiplied by one point five six two five gives us twenty five, which means that proportion. Sorry, let me write that actually properly. So because the proportion is not the same, this, is, this would not be producing an exponential graph. It's actually one half of a quadratic, but it's still not exponential. On this one, well, we know that 2 multiplied by 2 gives us 4. 4 multiplied by 2 gives us 8. 8 multiplied by the same 2 gives us 16. And 16 multiplied by 2 is 32. This one is the same proportion. This absolutely is exponential. Last but not least, going from 1 to 8 is multiplying by 8. So in order to get from 8 to 27, we'd have to multiply by 3.375. Automatically, we can see that that's not the same amount, so it's not going to be. But I like finishing things off. We would be multiplying by approximately... 2.37 to get to the next number. And to get to the last one, we would be multiplying by approximately 1.95. This for sure is not the same. So I'm actually just going to clone this. So because that's not the same, I might as well clone this one too. It's not exponential. Now if we look at what these numbers are, we can actually specifically tell what these are. For example, this one is the equation of y equals an x to the power of 2. This is not an exponential. For something to be an exponential, it needs to have a base with an exponent of x. This is a base of x and an exponent of 2. Each of these numbers are being squared to get to our next number. In this one, this is actually changing. Every single one of these Sorry, not changing. These are actually all x to the power of 3. Which means, now of course, we're not going into the negative, so we don't know whether it's the full half. Both of these are polynomial expressions. This one is a little bit different. Now, when I made a mention about our base 
being what is left or what is remaining. It's also talking about what is the proportion which means we can also tell what this equation is, is all of these are two to the power of x. Now, what if this is going to be different? So this is talking about exponentials, and this one is still exponential. It's a base to the power of x. But we're going to change one thing. We're going to change a key aspect. We're going to change what the equation looks like. In each of these equations, we're going to predict the x amount of x-intercepts, predict what the y-intercept would be, and behavior, domain, and range. Are they increasing or decreasing graphs? And then we're going to verify by graphing. So in order to do the graphing, a great online calculator, or you can download it for free at using your phone, is a Desmos calculator. Obviously, wouldn't be accepting these ones on exams. We do have the graphing calculators at the school. And on an exam, I would expect that you'd be using the graphing calculator because you would not be able to use your phone. But if you're working on this at home, you can absolutely use the Desmos calculator and go through it like that. So the first thing is we have y equals e to the power of x. Now, e actually equals 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. So it is still something to the power of x, and it's the power of x. What it approximately then equals is 2.718281828. And it doesn't, it doesn't fully repeat after that. It becomes the next digit. 2.8.4.5.9.0.4.5.2.3.5.3.6.0.2.8.7.4.7.1.3.5.2.6.6. And it keeps on going like that. But it, it is an irrational number, but what you need to know is it's a base. And we can do a whole bunch more things with it. So for example, we can d determine and predict the amount of x-intercepts. So first thing that we're going to do, how many x-intercepts? Well, because it's an exponential, tying back to our first section, there's not going to be any x-intercepts. Our y-intercept, though, is going to be y equals 1. Because our y-intercept happens when x equals 0. If you have any number to the power of 0, it's just going to be 1. The third thing that we're going to calculate is what the end behavior is. Well, the end behavior for exponentials, I'll just do this and that'll be my little bit of graph. Is this going from quadrant two to quadrant one? Our domain, this one has no restrictions on it, which means it's going to be all real numbers. And as soon as I put a sketch of it on, you'll be able to see that, it, yes, it is all real numbers. Our range also doesn't change from section one because we don't have any restrictions, it's all of our y's that are greater than zero. But we can tell whether it's an increasing or decreasing graph strictly by the equation. Our e, our base, is 2.7. While that number is greater than 1, which means it's going to be an increasing graph.
So if we go to this question, you'll see that there's one thing different. And it's this. There's a number in front of our base. Traditionally, we'll call it A. So we have A multiplied by C to the power of X. Now the good news is a lot of our things don't change. Our x-intercepts, well, it's still an exponential, which means that there are going to be no x-intercepts. But our y-intercept does change. Our y-intercept changes because our y-intercept ha y-intercept happens when x equals zero. If we plug zero in for x. five to the power of zero, because we do follow order of operations, exponents comes first. Our y-intercept would actually become two. Our end behavior still doesn't change. It's still going from quadrant two to quadrant one. Domain is still x such a x is an element of the real numbers our range is still our y's that are greater than zero and all that we need to do to determine whether it's an increasing or decreasing graph is to look at what our base is in this case it's five which is certainly a number that's bigger than one which means we have an increase in graph. And when we put this graph into our graphing gra technology, it absolutely will be an increase in graph. But you'll see that it changes one key aspect. Instead of our x-intercept, or sorry, not x-intercept, our y-intercept being one, our y-intercept is two. In our next one. Again, we have no x intercept. It's an exponential graph. We're not going to have any x intercepts. Our y intercept, again, can be calculated when our x equals zero. When we know that five to the power of zero is one, which means our y intercept is going to be nine. It's nine times one is nine. Still going from quadrant two to quadrant one. Domain is all real numbers. And our range is all of our values that are greater than zero. So is it increasing or decreasing? All we need to look at is our base. And our base is five, which is absolutely a number greater than one, which means we have an increase in graph. So as we put it into our graphing software, it's going to look much higher because our y-intercept is going to be 9 where it crosses that y-axis that becomes 9 and last but not least 8 multiplied by 3 quarter x exponentials do not have x-intercepts y-intercept happens when x equals zero. Well, three quarters to the power of zero is one. Eight times one is eight. Our y-intercept is going to be eight. 
exponentials go from quadrant two to quadrant one? Domain. It's all real numbers. Range. Our y's that are greater than zero. And to determine whether it's an increasing or decreasing graph, we need to look at our base. Oh, our base is different now. It's three quarters. Three quarters is in between zero and one. We have a decreasing graph. So when we graph it, it's going to have a y-intercept of 8, but it's going to be a decreasing graph. And there we go. So one thing in our outcomes, and one of our, sorry, one of our indicators to our outcome is being able to match exponential functions to their graphs. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. But the key aspect that we're going to do, be doing in this question is we're going to provide reasoning as to why our choices they, they are, why our two choices are the way they are. Saying, oh, I just put this in my calculator. No, that's not good enough. You have to have an understanding of what the equation does and how it's going to connect to our graphs. So let's look at our first equation. Well, if we tie back to what we had just done, we should be able to make one note of what happens with our y-intercepts. We can see that this a value is actually what our y-intercepts are going to be. In this one, our number in front is 1. If we go back to section 1, all of those numbers in front of that base is 1. Our y-intercepts are all one. And this one, our base is two. Our, our number in front of our base is two. Our number in front of here is eight. Our number in front of here is nine. Well, we can look at strictly these equations right now and identify a few key characteristics. This equation means that three is going to be our y-intercept. Well, which of these equations has 3 as a y-intercept? This one. None of these other equations have a y-intercept of 3. So because our a value is 3, this one has to fit. But we're, I'm, I expect you to have both bits of information. Our base. Our base is 0.2. Our C value is 0.2, which means we have to have a decrease in graph. graph sorry. Now we can say for sure this is the graph that matches with this equation. For II and III, well, we have two bits of information. 4 is going to be our y-intercept. But 4 is going to be our y-intercept in both of these cases. So that's not going to be good enough to distinguish between B and D. They both have a y-intercept of 4. So having one characteristic isn't good enough. We're going to have to look at what our bases are. Well, this, having a C value greater than 1, means we have an increase in graph. This one would have to be II. Our C value in this one 
Well, it's 0 0.5, which means we have a decreasing graph. And we can clearly see that with the graph. Hi, I, I is the clear choice for this one. Now, I don't want you identifying that, oh yeah, by process of elimination, this is our last choice, it's gonna be IV. No, not good enough. Provide the reasoning. Two is going to have to be our y-intercept. Is it? Absolutely it is. Our base is four. Four is greater than one, which means we automatically have an increasing exponential graph. Now we have clearly stated, yes, this is IV. That is what I mean by provide your reasoning. So let's look at one more equation or one more example. Daphne has been recording the bounce heights of a ball. She's determined that her data could be modeled by the exponential, exponential function y equals 140 multiplied by 0 0.80 to the power of x, where y represents the height of the ball in centimeters and x represents the number of the bounce. Determine the height of the ball after the eighth, after the sixth bounce, sorry. Well, that's really nice and easy. The sixth bounce, well, that's x. x represents the number of bounce, so we do that. And literally plug that straight into our calculator. If you have to do order of operations before, which means you have to take our exponent before our multiplication, great. If you're using a good scientific calculator, you can just plug it right in. Get 36.7, and y is the height in centimeters. And there we go. That's all done. So what about on which bounce was the height less than half the initial drop height? So we have a few key points here. I'm just going to write down the equation. First off, what does half of the initial drop height is? What, what is half of the initial drop height? Well, for reading it, and we can actually know exactly what our initial drop height is. It's talking about where does it start? If you drop a ball, this is, this is what's happening. This ball is going here, hitting the round, and every single time it bounces, I can tell exactly to 80% of its original height, or sorry, of the previous height. So that's about 80%. Then we go 80% of that, 80% of that, 80%, 80%. Until it would just turn into a roll. So it's asking, what is this height? Well, what is it starting at? That is our y-intercept. Reading straight from our equation, that's 140. The question is asking, on which bounce was the height less than half? So it's asking, when was the height y less than 140? Sorry, less than half of 140, which means when is it less than 70? We can do some nice trial and error. But let's do some work first. In order to solve this nicely, 
I would want to divide by the 140. And what this does, so less than 0 0.5, it's asking 0 0.8 to the power of what number gives you something less than 0 0.5. Well, if we go by trial and error, you know that 0 0.8 to the power of 1 would be redundant. But 0 0.8 to the power of 2. Yeah, I thought so. 0 0.64. 0 0.8 to the power of 3 is 0.512. Well, that is not less than 0 0.5. So let's go one more. To the power of 4? Absolutely. We get 0 0.4096, which means... it would be the fourth bounce. After one, two, three, four, we would be less than half of the height. No? Have fun.